a lot of negative things happening I seen growing up around here. I don't witness numerous shootings. I done seen one of my friends get killed on Normandy Street. He got shot with a shotgun right in his chest. When I hear the gunshots at night, it's it's difficult just to deal with that. So it was nothing that we can be done. It was just oh, somebody got shot. You had to watch your step and you had to balance everybody's personality and try not to play favoritism towards anybody because that could get you killed growing up where I grew up at. I wasn't fair for my life. Not at all. Just used to it. I can go to the state house and it just doesn't feel right. But as soon as I get back to Grove Hall and I hear them sirens and I you know, hear people arguing in the streets, I feel like I'm at home. And, it, and it's kind of traumatizing, honestly. First time I seen somebody get murdered, I was five. So I didn't really know what to, what it was. I just thought, you know. And it happened so frequently, I kind of thought it was like supposed to happen. I hate to say it like that, but I kind of figured it was supposed to happen. And when you see all this stuff, you don't, I didn't really expect to live to see 18. Like I, me and my friends, we had, at 16, we started like, that was an accomplishment for us to get. hit 16. That was a big deal. That was more important than getting your high school diploma. It was more important than getting your driver's license. Way more important than getting a job. It was like, it was just that crazy. It was, you, life expectancy was, of us wasn't, wasn't like 50, 60 years. It wasn't 70 years. It was, you know, hopefully you make it to C16. And that was a major goal for us. The violence in my home was intense. I had tried to run away from home at 13. By 17, I was on my home. I became homeless. I jumped from couch to couch. I got tired of being homeless. I was getting ready to have a baby, and I wanted to be stable, so I had went to go look for help, and I ended up in the shelter. My father was an addict. The father of my children was an addict also, so that took a lot from us. I didn't want to see myself as my mother dealing with as what she dealt with my father's addiction for 20 years. I didn't want to go through that, so I cut it at two years. I was introduced to another individual, and once again, another introduction to drugs. And I was I was involved by selling drugs, so I sold drugs. We smoked a lot of weed when we was kids. We drank a lot of alcohol and. That was starting at 12, 12, 13 years old. We, I was actually introduced to some of the older guys that I looked up to. And I seen them smoking their weed and I seen them drinking their liquor and just the overall good time they was having. And it kind of, I kind of fell into that. And then it came time to, you know, support the weed habit, support your drinking habit. So that's when I got involved into the robbing and stealing part of it. As far as the violence, that just, that's just dealing with all the personalities that come along with living in the area. You have to be a violent person because if you're not, you're gonna get ran over. And you don't wanna get ran over around here because it's like a stampede. Once somebody ran over you, everybody's gonna run over you. I started working with Project Right as an employee since 2013. The work that I do comes from my pain, in a way. Um, the work that I do really pulls out my skills, my strengths, my passions. That's 450 right there at the beginning for me. <laughs> These are 150. Project Right actually was like the turning point in my life. I work closely with the schools in the area. We do let out, we do um, a, lot of, a lot of stuff with the schools to make sure the kids get home safe, make sure the kids get the right information that they need so they ain't falling into the weed and the alcohol. Person who drops the hula hoop first is out, okay? Okay. And the people come in, they can sign up for our after school programs, which is our double dutch. Other services that we provide are trauma-based, 
in the schools, we reach out to the students. Everything we provide is free and it's local, it's accessible. And a lot of our programs don't run out of our office. We're outside, we're on our feet. Um, we're in the schools, we're in community centers. Working with the gang members, um, we try to introduce them to the gun buyback program so they could, you know, that's a safe way for them to, to turn their weapons in without, you know, having to go do time for it. I feel like I'm changing Boston, like, in many ways. I feel like I'm, I'm doing a lot for the young kids to have voice in the future. I'm helping Boston because I'm not taken away from Boston. And for years, I was, I've was i been part of the demolition team and breaking down Boston, so now I get to rebuild Boston in my own way and in my own community, and it just feels great. If anybody's dealing with trauma, we make sure that we take care of someone in the office who's dealing with trauma. If someone's dealing with violence, we make sure that we deal with whoever's dealing with violence. We do a lot of stuff that makes people want to come to Boston. We do a lot of stuff to make people want to stay in Boston, and we make Boston relevant. We definitely make Boston relevant on, as a community. We're just where we need to be, where the people are. My name's Kevin Thomas, and I work for Project Right in Grove Hall. My name is Isabel Torres. I am from Project Right, rebuilding, improving Grove Hall together. <laughs>